We have an update video today. I have a number of products that I've been trying out over the last couple of weeks that I wanted to revisit. I wanted to talk a little bit about what I found in regards to wear time, in regards to changing of shade, all that kind of good stuff. So there's a number of products I'm gonna go through today. Lisa Aldridge being one of them, Gourlain, Yves Saint Laurent, Givenchy, Tom Ford, Suku, you get the picture. With that, let's just go ahead and dive in because I don't want this video to be like two hours long. So at the end of the month, end of March uh, or beginning of April, depends on, you know, my depends on my life and what I can get done, but I am going to have a best of spring and worst of spring. So that will encompass everything that I reviewed, January, February, March, all the spring collections. And if there was a little bit late December or something, and talk about for the spring collections, what were the worst products, what were the best products. So that video will encapsulate some of this as well. It will talk about why I think it's the best or why I think it's the worst, but it's not really an update video. It's a summary video, if you will, for the entire season. This is more of a, here's what I've reviewed over the last couple of weeks. And as I've been trying all of these things, here's what I've found. Now, the Lisa Eldridge video that I didn't go up that long before this, and I got a lot of questions about wear time, and I got questions about shade and all those things. The reason I didn't put a wear test in that particular video, although I had done wear tests, I am very particular about, when I talk about a wear test, it can't be just a day. And here's why. At least for me, depending on the day, depending on my hormones, depending on what I go do, depending on how stressed I am, depending on a lot of things, the temperature outside, I feel my makeup has a different road to go down that day. And I like to try it out in different circumstances over multiple days before I tell you, oh, I think it's gonna last this long or here's what I think it does or anything else. Now I do sometimes do a wear test where I say, hey, I, I had this on for six hours, eight hours, and this is what happened. But I tend to try to do more, okay, here's my first impressions. First impressions means I've used it one or two, maybe three times. And then an update video is, okay, now I've used it for at least a week. And I know in different circumstances, at different weathers, I live in New England, so the other day, it literally rained. It, it we had ice in the morning. Some parts of the New England had, some parts of New England had snow. We had ice in the morning and then we had rain all day, like all day. Today is a little nicer in regards to temperature. It's probably in the forties and no rain. Next week, we're gonna be in the fifties and some of the high fifties. So that's what I mean. Like I need to try it out when it's raining. I need to try it out when it's, you know, 60 degrees and sunny. I need to, try that's what I'm talking about. So, and luckily, I have the opportunity to do that because then the New England weather is bizarre. So I am going to talk about that today. In fact, let's just jump to that first. So first of all, I do have on the T3. And I think the T3 is much better than the T1. I'm going to do a swatch comparison again for you here. I'm going to shake them up. I did do a swatch comparison on Instagram and I just put them on the back of my hand so you can see them. The thing is though, these shades although light and T1 is supposed to be the cooler shade and it is, it's a cool neutral. So I don't think any of these, either one of these shades is particularly like super cool. I don't get that, which is actually better for me because I am not super cool. I'm, I've never been called cool. I think I'm more like G undertone than really a pink one. So here's the two shades. I think you can tell already, <laughs> this one is T1, this one is T3. It's pretty clear. This is a cooler shade, it's a little pinker, and it is a little bit lighter. And then this one is a little bit deeper and more of that almond almost color. And when you look at my face, now I do have bronzer on today, so I'll get into this in a minute. I'm gonna take a little bit more and put it over it so you can see how this works. But you can see, like here on my neck, I don't have anything here. It's a good match. It doesn't lighten up my skin too much. Can I wear the T1? Yes, I can. And I'm gonna show you where I can wear it. And I, can I wear it on my face, like my whole face? Yeah, I, I did that video, it looks fine. And if I had put some bronzer on that day, it would have been no problem whatsoever. 
However, by itself, I feel like it does wash me out a little bit. But with some bronzer, the T1 would work fine on me. Um, again, it has to do with the, the, the type of product that this is. Now, I went into great detail in that video. My, VTIT, my original VTIT, uh, videos of the product, original uh, reviews, I try to go into a lot of detail and, and answer a lot of questions. The one thing I did not talk about was building it. There's two reasons why I didn't do that. One, I felt like it would be unfair for me to do with just the one shade. I wanted to have two shades to see what was happening because I was trying to build the T1, but every time I built it, it looked, um, it didn't look right on my skin, but I was, but because I, because I was a makeup artist way back in the day, I could tell what was happening, at least to my eye, was that I was seeing that it was becoming uh, because it was the wrong color, it made me look, it, it, it enhanced the dryness in my skin. It didn't necessarily actually enhance it. It just looked like it did because the color was off. So that's something to be aware of. If you put really light color under your eyes and it's way too light, it can actually make you look worse than better. So I wanted to wait until I had a better shade to be like fair about my assessment. And the second reason was because I started to realize that I, I would never build this product. And here's what I mean. So this product is very much like the original Chanel tent, not the, not the new one, which is called Touch. The Touch is, it has a lot more coverage. This, the enhancing tint, is very much like the, the iconic, in my opinion, classic Chanel tent, which is a water-based, has little molecules in it, you break up the molecules, the, the pigment goes on your skin. That product and this product, you have to wait. So you put the dots on your face, I'm gonna do it in a minute so you can see what I'm talking about. You put the foundation on your face with your finger or you do it with a brush, whatever you, you like to do. And then you put it in with a brush or your fingers and then you have to stop. Stop. Stop, drop, so I'm sorry, I was thinking of stop, drop, and roll from like the 60s. Stop, I wasn't alive then, don't worry. Stop and let the pigment and the product work. So what happens is your skin absorbs the water and it absorbs the skincare, and then the pigment starts to evolve. So when you first put it on, you're like, I see nothing. And then 30 seconds in, you're like, oh, my skin looks less red, I look, even. And then two minutes in, you're like, oh, I have foundation on. <laughs> now again, it doesn't look like foundation, but it definitely looks like coverage. So if you don't wait, and then you're like, I have nothing on my face a minute later, and you start to build it, what ends up happening is you look, it starts to look like you have too, you put too much on your face. That's really what happens. So you want to let it develop a little bit. Wait two minutes. It's not, it's not a really long time. Just wait two minutes and then take a look at the coverage that you have and be, and figure out if you really need more. Maybe you feel like you do. That's possible. But you might think, hey, I'm actually pretty good. I don't, I don't need any more coverage. Now, so those are the two tips. Here's the T1. This is the cooler shade and the lighter shade. And I can tell you right now how I'm going to use this product in the future. One, one little dot, and I really, you don't need much. Now, I am gonna use, this is an Anissa, I think this is the concealer brush, I can't really remember. But the point is, this is the same brush that I use for my foundation, but I'm gonna use it for my under eye. Now, I'm just gonna tap and I tap, like don't, I'm not, brushing back and forth, I'm tapping. Tapping, tapping. You can do this with the, oh my goodness, I just forgot the name of the amazing woman who has brushes. It'll come to me in a minute. Uh, but you can do this with a lot of good brushes. You can just tap it in. You know, any good brush is meant to do that, okay? You don't have to use the Anissa brush. Although I really do like this brush. It's one of my go-tos. I have a backup in case anything ever happens to the foundation brush and the concealer. And I pull it a little bit down my nose because I feel like it just brings it together. 
Now I'm gonna wait a minute before I do anything because again, right now it looks a little too light and not blended with the rest of my face. So I'm gonna leave it a second, let it sit in. But do you see how that lightened under my eyes? Because this particular one, the T1, if you're pale like I am, it's a pale pink, which is perfect for brightening under your eyes. I realized it and I was looking at my face. I was like, this is a little pale pink, although my skin does look bright. And then I was like, wait a minute, I could use it under my eyes. Now, if you are a person who has very dry skin like me, you don't necessarily, necessarily need to powder after that. Cause like I said, it sinks in and it looks fine. But if you have oily skin or even maybe normal skin, you might want to powder just to make sure that you know you don't have transfer from your from your mascara. Okay, so you notice how it's starting to the it's starting to look like it blends more because what's actually happening is the skincare and the water is being absorbed by the skin and the pigment is left. And it looks great. Now I'm gonna take the T3. So this is a question about building, right? You can definitely build but you really don't, for the purposes of most people and what they're gonna use this product for, I don't think it's something you really need to do. What I mean is, I think most of the people that are gonna really love this product are people who aren't really looking for something that gives a lot of coverage. They're the kind of person like me that uses skin tints and, and tinted moisturizers and love the tent product from Chanel that first came out and the touch product, which has more coverage, obviously. But they're not, these aren't people who are really looking for a ton of coverage anyway. So I don't know if you're gonna have to really, I don't think there's gonna be a ton of people who are like, oh yes, I, I have to build this. But what I would tell you is that people like myself who don't wear a lot of foundation or who don't particularly like a lot of foundation on their skin also do want coverage and they usually want coverage because of the redness or discoloration or unevenness. And where I have that is here. I have it here and I have it here on my chin. And you can see already just, you know, a little bit of foundation, not foundation, a little bit of enhancer. You can see how much that covered. So it does, it is buildable. You can put more coverage on. It's never gonna be a medium coverage. It's always gonna be a light coverage, but it's a beautiful coverage. And I think it's one of the best products I have seen in a very long time. And that's saying a lot, because I go through a lot of products. For people who are looking for something that is a no makeup look, this is phenomenal because not only is it a no makeup look, but it really looks like you have no makeup on. If you don't build it, if you just put on the first swatch of like I did in the other video and you put on two drops and then put it all over your face. And even now, to be very honest with you, it is so hard to tell that there is anything that it does not look like I have foundation on. It does not look like I have, like I have an enhancer on. It doesn't look like I have anything on. It is phenomenally good. I don't usually, and by the way, just to run my point home, Lisa Eldridge doesn't have affiliate links. So when you click on the links for this stuff, I don't get any money from it. Nobody has paid me to say this. No one sent these to me. You know, I hope you guys know that even if someone does send something to me, I'm gonna be honest, but I want to reinforce, I have no financial interest in this whatsoever. This is a great product and I will be the first to tell you that I was very skeptical. I was just like, Ugh. and the first time I used it, I didn't really like it that much because I used it in a way that wasn't a prime way to use it. So that's what I'm saying. Like even the best of products, you gotta do some stuff. Like you have to make sure your skin is clean and moisturized if you have dry skin like myself. So absolutely love the product. Hopefully that answered all the questions that I didn't answer in the first one. I'm very happy with the T3. I am a little interested in, in the T5 because of that olive thing and getting rid of the redness, but this does such a good job of getting the redness gone to the point that I'm happy that honestly, I don't care. The T1 is great under the eyes. It brightens, it's beautiful. So these are going in my top drawer. I have a picture, it's gonna go up. And that's my top drawer that is currently empty. 
Okay, it's totally empty. And so what I'm gonna be doing is putting all the products that I love, just absolutely love, in this top drawer. And it's gonna be a high bar to get in this top drawer. So there won't be a lot in there for, for a while. But as I go through the collections, at the end of the year, I will have this top drawer filled with all the things that I know are just not only like the best of, but like the best of. So we'll have that at the end of the year. All right, so bronzer, I do have on my face the E Saint Laurent bronzer. So I have it in two. I did a, uh, videos with this. You can go back and take a look. I had the Dior videos at the same time. Two and four, two is the best shade for me. That's what I have on. It's a really nice bronzer. It is warm. It's not a super cool bronzer. However, shade two, which is what I'm wearing at the moment, works really well on me. I think it looks really nice. I think it gives a great bronze without looking too yellow. It doesn't look yellow. It doesn't look it doesn't look bad on me at all. In fact, I think it looks great. It has, it's the closest to Terra that I could find in the E Saint Laurent or the Dior shades. It's not Terra, but it's the closest to it. It, I would say it's actually pretty neutral shade too. Now, some of you have tried it and you're like, it's still too warm. It may be, depending on your skin tone and how your skin interacts with pigment and formula, you might not like it. But I will tell you one thing, regardless of the shade, and if you find a shade that works for you if you're not, or not, the formula in the E Saint Laurent is excellent. The bronzer formula that they did is extremely good. I do hope they come out with more shades. I do hope they have more reddish, more cool shades. But I think the issue is this. Bronzer, just as if we keep it very technically correct, bronzer is supposed to be warm. It just is as a, if we're being very technical, very narrow in our definitions. As I've said many times, as a makeup artist or as somebody who's doing your own makeup and you're just having around, playing around and having fun, you should put whatever you want wherever you want and whatever you like. However, generally putting a cool toned brown, any type of brown here looks weird. <laughs> it doesn't really look right because when you, sit in the sun and the sun hits your face, the high points of your face get the sun first and they tend to bronze like this and here and this and here and this and here. There are people though, like myself, that never really tan anyway. We wouldn't get bronze. It just, I will never bronze. It will never happen. When I do get sun and I have in the past and especially when I was a young person and didn't really know about SPF, my face would burn or I would wear SPF or I wear a hat or whatever and I'd still get like a redness here and freckles. That's what happened. Now I could build a tan. And again, back in the young days when I was an idiot, I did tan and it took probably two months for me to build up that shade. And even then it was very light compared with what people think of when they think of tan. It's just not in my, it's literally not in my skin. I, I am incapable of doing that. So, that is why there are people who are looking for cool tone bronzers because they feel like it doesn't look natural on them. I am one of those people. It doesn't look particularly natural on me. However, something like the two here or the four in the Dior, which is also a little cool leaning, as long as it's somewhat neutral, you can make it work. Now for me in particular, it works because my hair is warm. My school, my skin tone is more cool, yes but my hair is warm. And because my hair is warm and I have so much of it all right here, the bronze doesn't actually look that off. If however you have like black hair and it's like cool black hair and you have cool skin tone and you try to put a bronzer on that's bronzy in the definition that we're thinking of right now, it's not gonna look right. You're gonna look, you're gonna be like, it looks yellow, it looks orange. So that's what I'm trying to say. Like you might find that to me, a shade that works like a two, in the Saint Laurent because I've got these other things going on. It works for me. And you're also a similar skin tone, but your hair color is totally different. It might not look right. So play around with the different shades. See what works with you, works for you. But the formula is chef's kiss. I, I really do hope they, they come out with more. And blushes. I have the light pink, the light nude, and the light coral. I love these blushes. I think they're excellent. There's perfume in here. I always like to say that first. There's a scent. I love the scent. I think the scent's beautiful, but if you don't like perfume, you're not gonna like it. The light pink, that was the light pink. The light nude is what I have on today and it's exactly what you think it is. It's light, but 
the, what I would say about exactly what you think it is, it's not as, it's not as tan, it's not as neutral, nude, it's pink. It's got like a light pink. They called it a light pink beige, but I just get very light pink. And then the light coral is really beautiful. It's probably the most, I think it's the most pigmented of them. That's the light coral. I'll, I'll hold them all up so you can see them together. But I really like these blushes. I think they're really good. I am actually considering getting, looking at the deep ones and seeing how deep they are because I like these so much. I think they're really good. Again, great formula. They look beautiful on. I have nothing bad to say. They're, these are the light ones. If you don't, if you want a deeper one, go for the deeper ones. But I think overall, I had blush on already, but I just wanted to, because I put the foundation on over it. These are excellent. Great product. I don't, I understand why they put the perfume in. It's Guerlain. They're, they're a perfume house. I understand though many of us out there, migraines, all kinds of other things, just don't like perfume. I get it, but it's not a shock. Okay, Dior. I do have on the Dior Pearly. I have it here. I have it down my nose. I have it on my highlights of my face. I love these products. These are the Forever Glow Maximizers. Love these. I have them in the pearl. I have them in the pink and I have them in the bronze. The bronze is a heck of a lot deeper than you think it is. And I can definitely use it. I showed it on my channel when I did all three of these, but just be aware it's deep. You don't need a lot of it if you're pale like I am. If you're a deeper skin tone, it'll definitely work. If you're a very deep skin tone, I'm not sure because again, I'm so pale. It's, it's a little hard to gauge, but um, there are three other shades, uh, peach, gold, and rosy. And then they're coming out with a new one in the summer collection. I will probably buy it because I'm just interested. And I will get the peach one um, and the rose one. I don't think I'm gonna get the gold one. They will be, or at least I think they will be part of the Sephora sale. And then other, uh, like Nordstrom, for example, will match the 20% or 15% or 10%, whatever you get. If they have them in stock, you might wanna do that. Check with your SA. That is the beginning of April. We'll get there when we get there. It's all just rushing too quickly. Mascara. Today I have on the Lisa Eldridge because I want to keep using it. Like I said, this is a very fluttery lash. This is a very lengthening mascara. I do think it's really good. It doesn't seem to smudge. I haven't had any problems with it smudging or pieces coming off, anything like that. I think it's really good. If you're somebody who likes a lengthening mascara that looks like a fluttery, fluffy kind of lash, I think it's perfect. I think it's really nice. However, the Swede mascara, in my opinion, just throws all of them out the window. The Swede mascara is like my new favorite. I love that mascara. I didn't think I was going to because it, it does have like a prickly weird brush, but this thing, it really gets at every lash and it, I guess the formula in here, it's lengthening, but it's, it volumizes too. This thing is really good. So the Swede mascara, I, I gotta say, they did send this to me, but I, when this runs out in six months, when this is bad, I will buy another one because it's really that good. Now, I still love my Calorie Mascara and I still love my Jones Road Mascara. I'm not saying the other ones just certainly are bad, but of the ones I've been trying lately, the Swede one is fantastic. And their liner is what I have on today. This is a coal pencil, but it's a really good coal pencil and their prices are very reasonable and I get 20% off for all you guys. Was it 20 or 15? I'll make sure the code is below. But the point is, I think it's 20% off. Yeah, it's 20% off. You, you can get a, pre a reasonable price point and it's a really good cold liner. It's just smooth. It just runs right across the eye. You don't have to worry about it. For me, that's, I don't, I have nothing bad to say. On my eyes, Givenchy, this is 912. This is the very neutral palette that I talked about a couple weeks ago. It's just a really good palette. Yeah, it's neutral. Yes, I'm aware. I've been probably using it though more than anything else. There's a bunch of eyeshadows that I have been using. Of course, there's the Chanel Le Rivage. The Chanel Le Rivage is fantastic. I did like, two videos on it. Yes, you should pick it up. It's really that good. If you don't wear blue, don't buy it. <laughs> Leave it for somebody who will, will wear the blue. It's beautiful, but it's blue. There's a, the whole point of that is the baby blue that's in there. So if you really don't like blue, 
I don't understand why you'd get it. But it's just, it, I, I love that palette. I think it's great. The eyeliner that Chanel did, the Blue Abyss, if you can get your hands on it, definitely buy it. It's popping up at other retailers like I told you guys it would. Everybody was panicked and everybody was like, I'm never going to be able to get it. I'm like, it's going to come up. So it's at other places now. You'll be able to find it, hopefully. All I would say though, and me all joking aside a minute ago about me saying, don't panic, it's, it's makeup. But here's the thing. Yes, it is popping up at Saks and it is packing. <laughs> It is popping up at Nordstrom's, but it will not last. The thing about blue, and I keep saying this, when it comes to Chanel, for some reason, like the blues and the greens and purples, they don't do it very often. They do green more than they do purple, more than blue, and, and they, they haven't done purple in forever. You have to, if that's what you want, you the nail polish, for example, like I have it on my pedicure right now, the Lagoon, those are all going to go. They're, they're going to sell out. And... If you're waiting for them to go on sale, they're not going to. First of all, Chanel just practically never goes on sale. It's just one of those brands. Chanel doesn't do sales for various reasons. And in fact, I'm going to have a video coming up about luxury and brands very soon. We're going to talk a little bit about Chanel and Tom Ford. All right, so let's get to lips. There have been a ton of lip products that have come out recently. Okay, so first we're going to hit liners because I know everybody's really interested in Lisa Eldridge liners. I do have swatches of the 0N, 1N, 2N, and 2C. I love all of them. I love all of them. And I want to buy pretty much every shade she has. Now, there is a specific reason that I really like these and you might not. So let's talk about that. First of all, I want to show you a couple things. So here, right here, is 2C, okay? You can see it's definitely a pinker shade. It's like a berry. This is Pivon. Now, I think it's pronounced Pivon. I could be wrong. It's the Chanel. The people who speak French correctly, please correct me. P-I-V-O-I-N-E. So I get from that Pivon. Working on my pronunciation, I'm very bad at it. I'm very transparent about the fact that I'm very bad at it. You want me to do math? You want me to do taxes? I'm a lawyer by training. You want me to do that? No problem. French? Not so good. <laughs> okay, let's just, let's put it out there. Pivon, then we have the 2C. I wanted you to see, because it's a similar shade. It's not exact though, but it is similar. So if you have Pivon and you really like the Pivon, then the 2C is a very similar shade. The rest of the shades that are up here are not for comparison purposes in terms of color, but I wanted you to see the feel of these because it is interesting. So this one right here is the, where did I put it? The Lisa Aldridge regular pencil, the original pencil. And it is, this is a fair. And it is a much creamier formula. The new pencils, the Sculpt pencils, are a very different animal. These pencils are meant to sculpt and define, and they are more, they are drier. Now, I've already seen people write things like, I returned it because it was too dry, it, was, it wasn't soft enough for me, and I get that. Not everybody loves a drier pencil. MAC, MAC Cosmetics, has a drier pencil. And this is Devotion, and that's what's here. And what I would tell you, I'm drawing it across because I want you to see, can you see how it takes a little longer to get the shade? Because it's not as creamy. It's a drier pencil. The thing that I want you to understand is that the creamier the formula, even if it's an extremely good formula, it has more chance if you have oily skin or skin that has breaks down a, a product to feather, to smudge, to not last as long. Now, there are some that are pretty creamy and I would argue last a really long time. So this one here is the, where's my, I'm like, where's my Chanel? My Nude Brun, which is one of my favorites in Chanel. So this is a pretty creamy formula, and I find that this lasts literally forever. The Sisley does as well, okay? Sisley pencils. So it really does depend on what it is you like, what you want. 
If you're using a drier pencil, like the new Lisa Eldridge's, they're not dry, but they're drier, or the Max, what I've always done is I always make sure that my lips are prepped with a little bit of balm or a little bit of a maximizer or something that gives the glide, it gives it more glide. Now, you can't have it on like a ton of it on because then it defeats the whole purpose of having the dryer pencil and having the border, but you can put it on while you're putting the rest of your makeup on early on and let it sit in, let your lips absorb that and then use the pencil. So again, you might not like it. It might not be for you. Not every product is for everybody. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a really good reason that there are different types of pencils and Lisa herself has different types of pencils. She has the premier ones, which are the original ones, and these, which are a little drier and a little bit more for that sculpt and definition. I personally love these. They're different from my Dior's, my Chanel, and my Sicily's. And I found that these lasted all day. I have very dry skin. Now, lately it's been normal to dry, so I wanna put that out there, but it's definitely not oily. It is not oily. It does not break down product. My problem is my skin is so dry that like it cracks in here <laughs> in the corners because I talk a lot for a living. That's what I do for my job. I talk all day, I'm on Zoom calls, I'm on regular, whatever. I read and I talk, that's what I do. And so, and I analyze things. And then I talk some more. Uh, so I'm really well suited for this job, but it's so dry that it cracks. So the dryness, I think, keeps liner pretty well. Um, and lipstick, on the other hand, because it's the cream, that it soaks everything in that's in there and then nothing is left because it's, it's absorbing all the emollients it possibly can because my skin is, is dry. The liners, I didn't have a problem with. I really didn't. They lasted absolutely fine on me. Did they fade? Yes, absolutely they faded. I would say about the six hour mark, they were very faded. But it's not like they were gone. It's not like they broke down. It's just, I'm talking, I'm eating, I'm drinking. So yeah, they wear off, they, they fade. But that was about it. I also have a tendency to bite my lip. I try not to, I really try really hard not to, but I do if I have my lip. So, I had no problems with these and I really like them, but they are very different formula than her original. They are more like the MAC liners. If you're a big MAC liner person, then these are for you. If you're not, if you really want a very creamy liner, don't buy them because you'll be unhappy with them and you'll have to return them. So, so don't do that. That's my take. Buy, buy, knowing now, yeah, okay, these are drier and you don't like that, don't buy them. It's, just, it's a waste of money, it's a waste of time. Don't do it. All right, last lips. I have so many lip products, guys, I don't even know where to begin, but I will make a couple of comments. One, there's a product that I haven't really talked about that I have been using. I was gonna wait till we got to closer to the Sephora sale, but I wanna mention it. So you can put it in your carts if you're interested. It's the Ole Herrickson Pout Preserve Peptide Lip Treatment. Comes in this little thing. This is the cocoa one. I actually bought it for my sister and she loves chocolate. That's her favorite thing in the world. So she left it up here and I used it and I was like, oh, this is good. So I really like this. It's a hydrating lip treatment. So it's the other lip treatments that you have. It's like a little balmy thing. But the thing is, it's actually got a really nice, um, I forgot what this is called, like the, the thing, whatever, but the plastic thingy where you like pull it out. But it's actually very controlled. Like I really like the way it comes out. The color, by the way, of the cocoa one is beautiful. Like I love the color because it's a very me color. And it's really comforting and really moisturizing. And I love it as a lip treatment and I've been using it a lot. So I have to buy another one for my sister, but that's okay, the sale's coming up. So if you're somebody like me who has dry skin and dry lips, you might wanna check this out. I don't think it's particularly expensive and it'll be 20, 15 or 10% off. And again, you can return it if you don't like it, but I really think it's a good lip treatment. I, I, it's been working well for me. And like I said, I have problems with my lips. Okay, the other lip products. All right, so I'm gonna go through three lipsticks, three types of lipsticks, and I'm gonna tell you the pros and cons, and I'm gonna tell you the pros and cons of the three. First, these are the Flight 70s. 
These are, these were sent to me, I'm gonna make it very clear. These were, there's six shades, they are tinted lip balms. That's the easiest way to explain them. And I really like these. I think these are beautiful. I like the Flight 7 products. Um, I am a more mature person. Um, my skin is more mature. But I really think these are great. They are an excellent lip balm because they are very saturated in color. That's a really good color. It's not like a lip balm. It's got a heck of a lot more pigment than a lip balm. This is one of my favorite shades. This one is Wishing Well. And it looks very much like, actually it looks like the cocoa treatment. But anyway, the point is, it's a really good lip balm. It's really comforting. It's comfortable. It's got great saturation, great pigment. They just fade off. They're really a good for a balm, they actually last a heck of a lot longer than you might think. And they don't accentuate lines. They don't bleed. They don't bleed. They're really, they, they're, because they're not glossy. They're balmy. So they have a, a glossy kind of look to them, but they're not, they're like, they're almost like a satin. And they're absolutely phenomenal. Next, these are going to look weird to you because they're not, they don't have their cases, but I have a case. I just don't know where the heck it is. So these are the Suku New uh, Glaze, Moisture Glaze Lipsticks. And I have them in a bunch of shades. I talked very, did I talk briefly about these? I can't remember. But they had these in the spring collection. They're having them in the summer collection and the pre-summer collection. And these are absolutely amazing. Like I said about Lisa Eldridge, and I said it's one of those things that like, it's revolutionary formula. These glaze lipsticks are amazing. Absolutely love them. They are like when I first discovered a lip sheet from Chantecai. They have great saturation, great pigment, great gloss. They stay on, they make your lips feel better. You should buy them in every shade. You should take a look at them. You should take a look at them and see what shades you like because they are stunning. The one that I just put on is 09, which is my favorite. It's like a brownish. I just love this shade. I have four shades. I would recommend you take a look at, and figure out what shades you want, what shades you like. They're not selling out as much as they used to, Suku. I think Suku actually recognized that their stuff was selling out immediately, so there's more shades available. You do have to get the refills separate from the cases. There's a case that it goes into, but you can use them without the case, but they look a little odd. But the formula is just so good. Suku knocked it out of the park with this. It's like they're melting blushes, which then they got rid of. So I might pick up more shades. Again, I'm on my low buy right now. These are supposedly part of the permanent collection. Now the summer collection or the pre-summer collection that just launched, there's like new two new shades in there. Those I think are limited edition. If you see something that says limited edition, that means that it's gotta be gone. It usually has a special number in Suku, usually a three digit number. And the main line usually has a two digit number. Not always true but usually true. So just keep that in mind when you're ordering. All right, last but not least are the Tom Ford. These are the stiletto lipsticks. I have one on today. This one is Open Back. What is the name of the shade? Open Back. All right, here's the thing. Like I said in my video when I reviewed these and I showed you all the shades, I know I'm gonna get a lot of flack for saying this, but I really love these. <laughs> Look, I know, I absolutely know that it's a ridiculous amount of money to pay for such a small amount of lipstick. I am so aware of that. There is like practically nothing in this freaking lipstick. Like it's the tiniest amount of lipstick ever, guys. I think that's $50, okay? I forget exactly, but I'm pretty sure it was $50. However, I keep using them. Like I keep coming back to these. I love them. I like the way they look on my lips. I like the way they wear on my lips. I like the fact that they're so incredibly thin because they're just easy for me to use. I don't have to worry about going outside of the lines. I don't have to worry. You can hear Ellie running up to me. She's very excited about them as well. And I really love the, yes, Ellie, I love the finish. I just love these. I get it. You are absolutely right to say that the price is ridiculous for what you get. You're not wrong. And I would ask Tom Ford, if I could ask Tom Ford to, I understand they can still make them the exact same size. They can keep as little lipstick as that's in here as, as is in here, but they could cut the price by 25%. 
Now I know Tom Ford's not going to do that because Tom Ford has always, Tom Ford has never been concerned about the price point. Tom Ford has always made it clear that they wanted to have a brand, their makeup brand was luxury and it was going to have a luxurious price. Chanel, if you've ever noticed, when you and, and the prices have crept up a little bit, sticks were originally priced to get in that aspirational shopper, shopper. So in the beginning, the idea for Chanel lipsticks was, okay, you can't buy a Chanel bag, but you can buy a Chanel lipstick and that'll get you stuck on the Chanel train and eventually you'll get, that was the idea for Chanel. And the reason the beauty lipstick and the lipsticks for Chanel were more reasonable, and they are still actually, believe it or not, more reasonable, but the reason Chanel did that on purpose, the brand, is they were trying to get, grab the aspirational shopper and pull them into the Chanel world. And then one day when they made more money, they would go buy the Chanel purse or the Chanel shoes or the Chanel whatever. Worked for me. Tom Ford never had that plan. Tom Ford went into to the brand of makeup and said, we're going to start with the expectation that the price is going to be expensive because it's Tom Ford and it's worth it. It's always been that way. I'm not surprised they haven't changed. Again, love the lipsticks. I love the way they look, but the price is astronomical. The, saying that though, I'm still buying. I bought three more because I like them that much. And I, there was one shade that I didn't have that I wanted. Again, spend your money the way you feel is an appropriate way to spend it. I am not offering you financial advice because that's not a good financial decision. It's purely an emotional one. Just putting it out there. Of course, I had a video with skincare. I gave you a bunch of updates about skincare. Loving the dewdrops from Bloom FX. Those are excellent. Sweet Beauty, as I mentioned, was a new brand. I love all their stuff. The True Botanicals is what I've been using on my skin to make it look, it's really working extremely well. I like it. One Skin and Calcium, again, both amazing. I have codes for some of those. I'll make sure I'm posting those types of things up on Instagram as well. And I want to thank all the brands for sending me these things. It's been great. More often than not, I pay for everything myself, which in luxury becomes extremely expensive. So I do appreciate that. And all the brands that I have talked to are very well aware that my opinion is my own. And if I don't like something, I'm going to say I don't like it. Nothing is worth your reputation. So if you have any questions, if you have any specifics that you want to know about all of these things, I tried to make this video as short as possible, but again, it is long because I went over just so much. If you have questions about other products that I didn't mention today, it's because I felt like I had done enough on them and I had gone into enough detail, like Chanel, for example, or I just don't really have a different opinion or anything else to add from what I did. But if there is something that you still feel like is out there and you, you have a question about, let me know. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I really do appreciate it. Hope to see you in another video really soon. Bye.